I traveled to Paris, London, Amsterdam, even visited Africa, all for free. And I'll tell you how you can do it for free too. The first step is very simple. You gotta find this guy. He's gonna take all your photographs, put it inside a computer, use Photoshop, change the backgrounds to make it look good, make sure you match the lighting and the shadow and these small knickknacks, fix it. Voila, looks good. Add a good caption, make it a carousal, tell a story. Because if the story isn't good, it won't distract them from the actual photo. Keep going and then you have a fantastical following of jealous of fans who love your life. Right? And then you can sell them stuff. Right? Paris? Italy? On a freaking green screen? In a studio? You must be kidding me. Actually, it's really easy on the internet to fake anything. A six-pack ab body, a beautiful lifestyle, and all that travel and easy money. Leaving feeling you, thinking that you too can become an influencer and earn all that money easily. In this episode, we're going to de-influence the luxurious and easy life of influencers. We'll talk about the good and the bad, because clearly the internet is lying to you. So let's begin. In the 90s, we had only two kinds of heroes. Well, maybe four. Our parents, actors, doctors and lawyers, because they had great jobs, even engineers. And of course, we had sportsmen. If we looked at these sports people, we thought, wow, what if I could be this? That means only a small number of people could be legends. Then came the internet and Instagram, Facebook and whatnot and COVID and suddenly everyone could become a hero. Simply with one light and a camera, you could have 10 minutes of worldwide fame. Now your next door neighbor could be a little more famous than you by barely doing anything. Maybe this dance video or a stupid prank and he gets so many views. And then we see stuff like this. All these YouTubers making crores of rupees and these guys abroad making millions. And then we have them going on private jets, traveling, buying cars, living the freaking high life. But that is supposed to be you, right? Why aren't you getting all of this? Have you ever felt that? This means content creators create a new kind of feeling that has been unexplored by the masses. And this feeling is insecurity. But like every de-influencing episode, we're going to talk about the realities. And I think in my experience, I was once in Bangalore. Zero One has a lot of fans and some of them are youngish. But very rarely we meet people really young, like this 12 year old who stopped me while I was trying to get into a cab, held my hand, was telling me how much he loves Zero One and all the other channels he follows. And then he looks up to me and says, I want to become a YouTuber when I grow up. I asked him why. He said, because YouTubers make lakhs of rupees every day and probably 10 to 20 crore rupees a year. I have no idea how he got such a specific number, but his source was the good old reliable internet. Obviously, this is not true, but let's talk about the reality. I want to read a few headlines for you. The first one. Chinese social media influencer dies trying to lose more than 100 kgs at a weight loss boot camp. 21 year old dies as Instagram reel attempt goes wrong in UP village. Influencer Remy Badar shared her struggles with binge eating but says followers responded with cruel body shaming comments. So what's the reality of all these content creators? Are all of them bad? Of course not. I would say none of them are bad. Reality is always neutral. But the parties playing this game get caught in this insecurity web. In fact, this person over here conducted a research about happiness and social media. And basically, out of all of his research, he came to say, a social media content creator is a performer where both parties, the consumer and the creator, feel awful afterwards. The viewer feels that he doesn't have something in life and feels bad. The creator knows that it's imposter syndrome hitting him and all of this is not true, but he needs to do it for engagement. So what's the deal? Is the life of a content creator actually amazing? And what you see on the internet, is it even real? 
influencer. Influencer. The influencer. Today, influencing has become a real job. It is a $250 billion economy. Seven out of 10 Indians, they believe what these social media influencers are saying. Indian regulators are hunting down financial influencers. My point is, you cannot be sure about their motives. So let's talk about the influencer lifestyle. The first thing you need to know is that nothing on the internet is actually real. Not this perfect pen and my perfect throw. You see? And my perfect throw. You see? Do you see? Nothing on the internet is real. So my point is very simple. The next time you see an online influencer showing you this crazy life where he's jet setting, making a lot of money, it's not true. I once saw this amazing reel of a person talking about how much money he made and I thought he'll say one or two or three million dollars but he said a number in billions. It was this video. The most amount of money that you ever made in a single year. In 2019, I sold 76 companies for 1.27 billion. And my friend asked me and shared it and said, dude, how is this guy making so much money from private equity? All you needed to do was click on that profile and see in the description that he's actually selling a course on how to make billions of dollars. Why would a billionaire sell a course? It's not true. It's not true. It's just not true. And even these photos of a private jet, you guessed it, are fake. We found a studio in Gurgaon where you pay a couple of thousand rupees and you can actually use this set to show that it's a private jet. But then I found this story which I thought was very interesting. It says, TikTok star who bragged of jet setting lifestyle jailed in Peru for drug smuggling. Another epidemic is unrealistic beauty standards. And let me tell you a little story. King Louis XIV, I think, used to dress up like this. His wig looks magnificent, his mooche look well thin, his arms and body looks fine until you see this. His stockings and his heels. This was the epitome of power dressing and manliness. Beauty standards change every era. Like, ab sab khulle khulle kapde pehente. in my time we used to wear tight jeans. But now you cannot because it doesn't look, well, it looks millennial. But if beauty standards are changing every few decades, that means all these standards are... Say it with me! False! False. A lot of these other things that we call values don't change, but beauty standards do. I know it's not a value, but why are you so obsessed about it? Why is the internet so obsessed about it? Because content creators do this. It's called trickery. Sorry, it's called Photoshop. But I want to go one step further and show you how camera angles and lighting can completely change what you actually see or what the camera actually sees. Thoda, you can look good, bal ko aise style kar lo, but you can't do this. Let me show you what I mean by this. And these are true stories. People are getting plastic surgery to look like Snapchat filters. What? Social media usage correlated with desire for cosmetic procedures in a new study. There's a study which says that cosmetic procedures are increasing because of the insecurity that's created on the internet. That's not a good reason to do cosmetic surgery, right? What do you think? Now let's talk about the best part of this video. The moolah, the money, the sponsorships, paisa. A sponsorship is basically when a company comes to a person who has distribution, also known as content creator, to talk about their product and basically sell more of their mal. And this is completely normal. It's been happening for so long. Pellet used to be radio, TV, hoardings, etc. Now it's YouTubers and content creators. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, if you have liked this video so far, then you should definitely check out Jaka's Poker, BabaBlackSheep.com because over here you can play multiple games and you will win real cash. Go to the link in the description, click on the link and then type Mama, Mujhe Mat Aise Jhoot Bolo and you will get 10 rupees off on your first transaction. You get my point.
when such a thing happens that actually harms the user because it's financially bad for them or mentally bad for them, then that becomes a problem. And I'm not making any of this up. We actually have data from the Advertising Council of India where they say 39% of ads checked were in some kind of violation. 17% of ads belonged to illegal betting apps. 21% of ads were not even disclosed by the influencers, which means that there's an ad, you just don't know it. They're actually not using the product. And if you look at the top 10 violation categories, it's healthcare, betting apps, and personal care, which means that if something wrong is being peddled because there is a violation according to the standards here, you're either losing your health or your money. Now, I'm not saying sponsorship is bad. If it's done the right way, it's completely fine. It's good for everyone involved and that's how the economy actually grows. But sometimes people get greedy, actually influencers get greedy and f up. Like a few weeks ago, this new app, which promised 100% rewards if you invested in it, would come up. It was a mystery box where you would invest in some amount of money and guaranteed you would get something back. Sometimes it was an iPhone. They even promised a car, I think. So this person invested 11 lakh rupees in the app. God knows it's not an investment when you do something like this, but okay, he used the word investment and the app was removed from the Play Store. I'm guessing because it is illegal and just not right, that's why. And then of course we have fame. Fame is the byproduct of creating content and getting a lot of engagement. If your content is relatable, people share it, the algorithm pushes it, you get more users, following increases, you get a good feedback loop and if you do it long enough, you get a nice following. Another byproduct of that quick rise is bullying, like these news reports here. The frenzy of unrelenting online bullying further destroys the mental health of those already suffering and everyone has a role to play. So online bullying is a real thing. It's not funny and it is extremely serious, exactly like real life bullying. And I think the owners of Facebook and YouTube and all should agree that they are selling new age drugs to new people where people are so addicted that while they're driving or they're talking or they're meeting someone in a restaurant offline, they're addicted to this, their screen. There's a reason why Black Mirror on Netflix has done so well, because it's scarily eerie and it could possibly happen in real life too. But the problem of fake followers also exists. I mean, what's interesting is that sometimes they have a lot of followers and the engagement is really low. I mean, look at this headline where they say Grace Africa, which is a name of an influencer, meet and greet video, TikTok star with 1.3 million followers, that's 13 lakh followers, organizes a meetup and no one shows up at that event. How is that even possible? So what are the things you can do immediately to understand how this influencer thing is messing with your mind? One, know that there are two kinds of influencers. The first kind is a person who hacked the algorithm and just has a lot of followers, but is not actually famous. They just have a lot of followers. There's a difference. The second kind is the person who has worked on his craft for years and years and has industry respect, like Casey or Ronaldo, or Shah Rukh Khan, or anyone else who's really done what they really enjoy and because they're so good at their craft, they have a following. These people should have a little more respect, at least for you, I do, because they've built something of their own and out of respect, people hit that follow button, not because the algorithm forced them to. Two. Everyone has low moments, everyone has high moments. You should change your expectations from all these physical things you see on Instagram to something that's an inner barometer. Like here in our company, these are our milestones. The celebrations we do, the outings we have, but we also have low moments. Last year was not so great for us and that is part of life. This year is, so we're celebrating it. Find your lows and highs because over a long period of time, It'll all seem like a nice, smooth uptrend. Well, hopefully. We'll see you in the next episode. Or pass. Or pass. <laughs> Not even my perfect pen throw. Jaka's <laughs> poker, ba 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 ba, ba ba black sheep. Use my. Use my. <laughs> Shit! Ba ba black sheep.